The fame of King Tutankhamun, an Egyptian pharaoh, became widespread when his tomb was accidentally discovered by archaeologists in November 1922. This single discovery brought answers to several questions that have been asked about ancient Egypt and its traditions. Ready to know what archaeologists discovered in King Tutankhamun's tomb? Join me as we unravel this in a secret world. On February 16, 1923, in Thebes, Egypt, a lot changed in the ancient world's discovery as English archaeologist Howard Carter entered the sealed burial chamber of the ancient Egyptian ruler King Tutankhamun. A tomb whose location has remained unknown suddenly became accessible to all, and the whole world was anxious to know the untold secret that lies within the tomb of this ancient king. Howard Carter didn't just stumble upon the tomb, he had always worked towards it. When he arrived in Egypt in 1891, he became convinced there was at least one undiscovered tomb. And this turned out to be the tomb of Tutankhamun, or King Tut, who lived around 1400 BC and died when he was still a teenager. The boy pharaoh was enthroned more than 3000 years ago at just 9 years old, and reigned for less than a decade. It was a short reign. King Tut likely spent his life in pain due to a cleft palate, a curved spine, and a weakened immune system before dying from malaria and a broken leg, according to one study. After he died, Tutankhamun was mummified, according to Egyptian tradition, and buried in a tomb filled with artwork, jewellery, and treasures. With the support of Lord Carnarvon, Carter searched for five years without success, and in early 1922, Lord Carnarvon wanted to call off the search, but Carter convinced him to hold on one more year. He believed a breakthrough was just around the corner, and he eventually got what he had been after for years. On November 4, 1922, in the Valley of Kings, Carter and his team of excavators found steps hidden in the debris near the entrance of another tomb. The step was discovered by a worker. According to Carter's published account, the workman discovered the step while digging beneath the remains of the huts. Other accounts attribute the discovery to a boy digging outside the assigned work area. At the bottom stood a doorway sealed with limestone and plaster, into which Carter cut a peephole to see the passage beyond, which was filled with rubble. Carter sent a telegram to Carnarvon, then in England, and had the workman refill the pit to secure the tomb until Carnarvon's arrival. While waiting, Carter asked his friend and colleague Arthur Callender to assist with the upcoming excavation. Upon Carnarvon's arrival, the work resumed and they discovered the steps led to an ancient sealed doorway bearing the name Tutankhamun. The debris that filled the passage contained objects bearing the names of other kings, suggesting it might be a cache of miscellaneous objects buried during his reign. This passage was cleared to make its way through. With trembling hands, Carter made a tiny breach in the upper left-hand corner. He could see just darkness and blank space as far as an iron testing rod could reach, and this showed that whatever lay beyond was empty and not filled as the passage had just cleared. Candle tests were applied as a precaution against possible foul gases, and then after widening the hole a bit, he inserted the candle and peered in. At first, he could see nothing, and the hot air escaping from the chamber caused the candle flame he held to flicker. Soon, his eyes grew accustomed to the light, and details of the room within emerged slowly from the mist. He could see strange animals, statues, and gold, Everywhere was filled with the glint of gold. When Carter and Lord Carnarvon entered the tomb's interior chambers on November 26, they were thrilled to find it virtually intact. Unlike the tombs of most pharaohs that were plundered in ancient times, as many had long ago been broken into by robbers and stripped of their riches. Tutankhamun's tomb was hidden by debris for most of its existence and therefore not extensively robbed, leaving its treasures untouched after more than 3,000 years. The men began exploring the four rooms of the tomb, and on February 16, 1923, under the watchful eyes of several important officials, Carter opened the door to the last chamber. At this point, everyone was tense. What could be inside this tomb? Alas, it was opened and all eyes behold a sarcophagus with three coffins nested inside was found inside the tomb. The last coffin, made of solid gold, contained the mummified body of King Tut. The rich burial consisted of more than 5,000 objects, many of which were in a highly fragile state. Among the riches found in the tomb were golden shrines, jewelry statues, a chariot, weapons, and clothing. The perfectly preserved mummy was the most valuable, as it was the first one ever to be discovered. The ancient Egyptians saw their pharaohs as gods. They carefully preserved their bodies after death, burying them in elaborate tombs containing rich treasures to accompany the rulers into the afterlife. Despite rumours that a curse could befall anyone who disturbed the tomb, its treasures were carefully catalogued, removed, and included in a famous travelling exhibition called The Treasures of Tutankhamun. The exhibition's permanent home is the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. To the Egyptians, who had recently become partially independent of British rule, the tomb became a symbol of national pride, strengthening pharaohism, a nationalist ideology that emphasised modern Egypt's ties to the ancient civilizations. 
and creating friction between the Egyptians and the British-led excavation team. The publicity surrounding the excavation intensified when Carnarvon died of an infection, giving rise to speculation that his death and other misfortunes connected with the tomb were the result of the ancient curse. Some claimed it was the curse of opening the tomb that killed him, others simply believed otherwise. The tomb's discovery did not reveal as much about the history of Tutankhamun's time as Egyptologists had initially hoped, but it did establish the length of his reign and gave clues about the end of the Amarna period, the era of radical innovation that preceded his reign. It was more informative about the material culture of Tutankhamun's time, demonstrating what a complete royal burial was like and providing evidence about the lifestyles of wealthy Egyptians and the behavior of ancient tomb robbers. Since the discovery, the Egyptian government has capitalized on its enduring fame by using exhibitions of the burial goods for purposes of fundraising and diplomacy, and Tutankhamun has become a symbol of ancient Egypt itself. A century after the discovery of King Tutankhamun's tomb, archaeologists are still unearthing more artifacts, and they remain convinced that more will be uncovered. Some of the artifacts discovered are one is his death mask, which is the most famous artifact found in this tomb. The death mask is a 21-inch long, ornate mask that was manufactured mainly from gold and inlaid with semi-precious stones and colored glass. It weighs a huge 22 pounds. It was on Tut's face. The mask depicts Tutankhamun with a long beard and a headdress bearing a cobra and a vulture. On the back of the death mask is a spell from the Book of the Dead, written in hieroglyphs, which according to Marianne Eaton Krauss, a senior fellow at the American Research Center in Egypt, guaranteed the mask's ability to function as the face of the deceased. 2. King Tutankhamun's Coffin Tutankhamun was laid to rest in three coffins nested within each other. All three coffins show Tutankhamun with a long beard and holding a crook and flail. The combined coffin weighs about 1.25 tons. Joyce Tildesley, an Egyptology professor at the University of Manchester in the UK, wrote in her book titled Tutankhamun The Search for an Egyptian King that the larger size of the coffins, coupled with the relatively small size of Tutankhamun's tomb, made it challenging for Carter to open them. The Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities noted that the outer coffin is made of gilded wood and has blue and red glass on its crook and flail. Tildesley said the second coffin is also made of gilded wood and was found with several plants, including disintegrating lotus flowers on it. The third and innermost coffin is made of solid gold and was found wrapped in linen. Tutankhamun was laid to rest in the innermost coffin, with his death mask among other items on him. 3. Tutankhamun's Throne Two thrones were found in Tutankhamun's tomb. One was made of ebony, and because it resembled a bishop's chair, Carter called it the Ecclesiastical Throne, although there is no evidence that it had a special religious purpose. What could have been the significance of the two thrones? The other throne, sometimes called the Golden Throne, has a depiction of Tutankhamun and his wife, Ankenesimun. In his notes, Carter wrote that Ankenesimun seems to be placing ointment or perfume on Tutankhamun. The chair was covered in gold and silver foil and inlaid with colorful stones, glass, and glazed ceramic. Other artifacts, apart from the widely known ones, were also discovered. Who knows what mysteries are yet to be uncovered in this world of ours? The ancient world holds several unknown secrets, and we hope to see more of them. Let us know what you think of these discoveries in the comments. If you enjoyed these mysterious discoveries, support us by subscribing to our channel. Until next time, thanks for watching.